Yeah, so today's thing we're going to ignore is this oil well on my chin because it's hot as hell in Colorado right now. Literally, like, a quarter of my state is on fire, which is normal. It's summertime. And I just simply don't feel like wearing makeup today. I did clean my glasses for you, though. You're welcome. Hello, my lovely viewers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and today we're going to be renovating another one of Risa Kroll Sims's builds. It's almost like we're friends and have similar taste in content. Weird. Anyway, Lil Simsy's doing her Fixer Upper series again over on her YouTube channel. I'll link one of her recent builds on that down below in case you want to watch it. But the idea is to take a house that is really not suited for the Sim or Sims that bought it and try to renovate it HGTV style. Just some ridiculous number of demands that they have and whatever budget and just go wild, try to make it work. So Risa built this house for that challenge and gave those of us who are not Kayla Sims permission to try to renovate this too. And I'll link their speed build of the house that we're going to be using today down below as well. And of course, I'm a sucker for a low effort build. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, so we'll be building in Brindleton Bay today here on the lot that's right next to the hospital. And I've already placed both the lot and the Sims. So let's jump in and see what we've got to work with. Oh, we have a thunderstorm to work with. Okay. Hmm. All right, hang on. We're, we're going to do something about this. We're also going to do something about those decorations too. Oh my, just so much to do. Hang on. Okay, now that that's taken care of, so we have Brady Schneider and his husband, Matthew Willoughby. Brady is a C-lister. He wants to be a musician. He is a materialistic, music-loving geek who wants to be a friend of the world. And his husband also wants to be a friend of the world. He is an outgoing, self-assured foodie. And he is a style influencer. Brady wants a music studio. Matthew wants a big walk-in closet for all of his clothes and everything. They also want a nice open floor plan that's Simstagram worthy. They also also want space for their three dogs, Xena, Merlin, and Sasha. Let's take a look at what they bought, shall we? It's this nice rundown colonial. It suits the style of Brindleton Bay really well. I think this really looks like this could fit in with this area and just this kind of traditional looking thing going on. Like this is definitely the house that the local teenagers come to and like play D&D &D, and then the like stodgy old conservatives are like, they're worshiping the devil. No, dude, they're, they're just pretending to be gay tieflings. It's fine, don't worry about it. Everything is dead. There's trash everywhere. God knows what plants these are with this gorgeous Strangerville door. I love that door. Come inside and Simstagram worthy this place is not. It's a colonial, so everything is cut up. Everything's a separate room. We come this way first. This is the dining room. This is really high on the wall. These windows are looking kind of banged up. Come into this kitchen and oh boy, it's a... Uh, it's a fixer-upper, all right. Oh god, the wallpaper and the- well, we've got upper cabinets, that's a thing. But, you know, that ceiling fixture definitely suits this architectural style. Yeah, definitely. But hey, you know what? There's a trash can, and sometimes that's all we can ask of a build, right? Coming over this way, we've got a nice little half bath that- I really worry about the plumbing in this place, I'm not gonna lie. We head to the right this time into what was probably the parlor at one point, is now a really dingy looking living room. Again, more trash on this just pile of pallets. The, the plants are growing in, beaten up, 
rug and sofa. Xena's having herself a good time. Nice fireplace with a crack behind it. That is definitely not concerning on a fire safety level or anything. This is probably where all the D&D &D manuals are kept. Up, up, up the stairs we go into the tunnel. First door on the left is the master bedroom. Um, do not think too hard about what's been going on on this mattress. That dresser has seen better days. This mirror's hanging on though. You know what? This mirror is living its best life and that's all we can ask. Coming in here to the master bath, we're looking straight out onto the park over here. Gorgeous view. We've got, you know, a toilet and a window that looks straight out onto the main square, which is definitely what you want when your bathtub is right here. The first door on the right, this is a hall bath that, oh boy, oh boy. The plumber on this job is gonna be making bank. Second door on the right here is another bedroom that looks like something terrible has happened in here. Got a nice radiator though that's definitely in working condition by the state of these walls. Here are some storage, you know, your gas mask, all very normal things to have in your house. Last door, we've got another dresser that's definitely seen better days. These nice doors out onto this patio. Like, look at that. Isn't that a nice view? Like, this is definitely the selling point of the house, is this central location this back deck here. You've got a pool. It could be in better shape. Plenty of space left on the lot. The bones are great. So now it's just a matter of us taking this and making it into the home of their dreams. Now, according to the listing here, they have 40,000 simoleons. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to set their household funds to 40,000 simoleons. So the first thing I wanted to do with this, of course, was just clean up all the trash. And I did go ahead and let myself have whatever money I got from that as well. Um, I will say that if you're working with one of these types of lots that's got trash on it, you can't actually delete the proper trash piles, the ones that you would actually have a sim turn around and throw away, unless you're deleting something else in the same swoop. So if you take the sledgehammer tool and you drag it, you can get them, but you can't just click on it with the sledgehammer tool and either delete it or sell it. So that's a trick that you might need if you're doing lots like this yourself. Um, getting rid, of course, of all of this grungy furniture as well. I held on to some of the fixtures, at least for the moment, um, just so that I would have them, like especially the bathroom fixtures, just in case. Going through getting rid of all the stuff on the walls as well. That carpet has gotta go, I gotta say. Not here for that. But here you can see me fiddling around. I cut out a lot of my attempts on the floor plan with this because this was a challenge to try to get both the walk-in closet and the music studio in. And what I ended up having to do was just radically alter the upstairs floor plan. I don't think there is a single thing up here that is still in its original spot. I moved the hall bath downstairs so that I could reposition the stairs as well, because that was one thing that was really tripping me up was they were just in just barely the wrong spot. So you can see here, I'm gonna take them and I'm going to wrap them around to change the shape of that upstairs hall. Um, and I made the, I actually switched the master bedroom over to the right hand side. You can see here, I'm putting that in. I'm trying to get the layout for the closet. I originally wanted them to walk through the walk-in closet to get into the master bath. And then I decided eh, that probably was not the best layout, but you can see here now I'm going to take the, take the stairs and put them where I want them as I'm kind of getting this finalized. You can see that entire upstairs bath that used to be the master bath has completely moved to the other side of the house um, just because it worked a little bit better for me so that I could use that entire space as the music room. Um, yeah, so there we go. There I'm finally wrapping the stairs around and I've got to move them around a little bit um, just so that I can make sure you can get into both of those rooms on the side, the hall bath, as well as the music studio. Um, you know, and, and walling it off so that nobody falls and dies. This house was actually a lot of fun to do um, just because of that challenge. I was able to get, you can see here, a huge walk-in closet. So I gotta say Matthew does kind of dominate this build a little bit. Um, 
because the the requests for architectural changes honestly mostly came from him wanting a you know more open floor plan with more light for the simstagram photos and wanting that big walk-in closet because the music studio you can kind of just shove in an old bedroom right but you got to add a walk-in closet that changes things and i thought about using one of the closets from get together like i really really considered it because technically those are walk-in closets especially if you use the two by two but i thought in the spirit of what was actually intended i wanted an actual walk it less of like a closet and more of like just a dressing room with everything there as well so here I am just moving the hall bath to kind of accommodate those stairs a little bit better, accommodate that layout a little bit better. And then that entire first floor apart from the hall bath is now open floor plan. Um, sprucing up the brick on the outside here. I really love that brick from Vampires. It's, it's some of the prettiest brick that we have. And now that they've done the update for Eco Lifestyle, if you have Eco Lifestyle, that brick is actually not classed as industrial. So if you want the look of brick, but don't want your lot to be pushed toward industrial, the Vampires brick is a good choice. And getting rid of the shingles on the top and just putting in clapboard. The shingles were fine, honestly. I considered leaving them, but... I kind of wanted something that looked a little bit cleaner since I cleaned up the brick. Changing out all the railings and stuff is, and the columns I'll do in a minute as well to mostly the stuff from Strangerville again because I thought that suited it and looked very nice um, capping off these, these corners as well, which yeah, I get it. That's kind of wasted money. You don't need it, but I liked it. So I'm gonna do it because it's my renovation. And yeah, switching out, I think I end up going with, yeah, these ones from Get Together that are just a little fancy, but not super fancy. And they're a little bit slimmer profile, so they don't dominate the front of the house quite as much. Cleaning up the pool as well. And then I was debating here what I was going to do with the windows because I considered actually leaving those windows, but then when I found these from Discover University, I thought they just kind of suited a, a classier version of a colonial style house, right? Where this isn't trying to be like the fanciest house on the block, but it's trying to be a little bit more than base game. I thought about using the red trim on those windows up top because I thought that the sashing on those downstairs windows was red and it's not, it's either brown or black. So I ended up going with these ones that I think match that sashing. Cause I still wanted the, uh, the shutters on. I thought that this house is the type of house that would have shutters. Um, and I even considered swapping out for these ones at one point because these are the type that you would like open dramatically, especially on the side that's facing the park, right? You just want to open your windows and be like, hello, my my loyal subjects, but I ended up deciding against it. I have never used that door from Discovery University though. And it just goes so well with the style of this house. I was really, really pleased. Um, coming in here and fixing up the wood flooring now, it's, it's in Brindleton Bay, so I am well within my rights to use that cats and dogs flooring. And the color scheme that I went with in this house was very inspired by the types of builds that I used to see on HGTV back when I had cable money, um, which is very light, bright, white everywhere. Um, very, very much geared to looking good on a camera. So looking as bright as possible and as expansive as possible with all the color scheme being very similar in value. Because a big myth is that dark colors make a room look smaller and it's not, it's actually contrast that makes a room look smaller. So you can have white walls everywhere, but if you then have everything else is dark, like all your furniture is dark and all your fixtures are dark, like everything's dark, that's going to bring the feeling of the room in closer. Like that's why the myth still goes around that glass tables make a room look bigger is because it's low contrast with the rest of the room. So as long as you're keeping everything kind of on the same scale, if that's what you want from your room is to make it look bigger, that's actually the trick. Um, I've done that in my bedroom. My bedroom is painted a very dark color in real life. And you know, the immediate concern from everybody was like, your bedroom's so small, it's just gonna look smaller. And it's like, no, because all of my furnishings, like all my bedding and stuff is pretty dark in value as well. So it works. Here I am deciding that, you know, I do have actually quite a lot of money to play with. 40,000 simoleons for a house this size is a lot of money. So I was able to give them some really nice um, furniture. Once again, you can tell I don't believe in matching end tables at all. Just, 
It doesn't feel realistic to me when everything in a house comes from a matching set. Like, yes, I'm aware there are people who buy matching sets. Um, you know, they sell them in furniture stores, but I don't think I actually know of anybody that has a full matching set that was all from the same collection. They'll get stuff that looks like it goes. Like, you know, everything is white laminate, for instance, but that doesn't necessarily mean it comes from the same collection. It just means it's similar in style. So that was what I tried to go with here as well, where everything was kind of purposely not matching. And I left the kitchen in the same spot. I thought the kitchen worked really well in this spot, but you can see here I'm bringing all those windows down just a little bit so that your Sims will actually be able to look through them at sim height, as opposed to usually, because these are medium height walls. So usually on medium height walls to get those regular sized windows to look good on the outside, you'll have them set just a little too high for your Sims to look through. EA does this all the time as well. So by bringing them down a little bit, it makes it a little bit more kind of realistic from the inside. Because how many times are you actually really looking at the side of a house? in in your build like not very often you're concerned with what the front facade looks like and that's kind of about it but i went for this nice contemporary style in the bathrooms using these spa day uh floors and walls and stuff and then a lot of fitness stuff for uh fitness stuff in spa day is mostly what mostly what these bathrooms are. This walk-in closet, I'm using a little bit of Get Famous, a little bit of um, Moschino stuff for that second clothing rack. And then that vanity is from Vintage Glamour and your Sims can actually sit at that and put on makeup. You can tell them what the color scheme is. You can't pick like by hand, you would have to go into create a Sim. Um, but you can't like pick individually, like I want this lipstick and I want this eye makeup. It gives you kind of coordinated options. So I figured since Matthew was a style influencer, that was the big thing that I wanted him to have actually was that vanity. I thought that made the most sense. And that's why I ended up doing the full walk-in closet instead of just shoving one of the get together closets in there. But here I am finally redoing this kitchen. And again, with kind of the eye on this being sort of an HGTV thing, I was like, stainless steel appliances and and nice cabinets, these like contemporary style cabinets, which I know is a little bit anachronistic with the style of the house, but I wanted it to look like it had been renovated. And I thought about doing that uh, peninsula there. I ended up taking it out and I put in a bar over here instead because I wanted them to have that seating. But I also thought, you know, they want to be friend of the world. Both of them do. So they're probably throwing a lot of parties. They would probably have just a small bar, um, especially since I think it's uh, Matthew is a foodie. So he would be very into that, I think. And when else do I get to use these... Uh, open like frosted glass doors on these uh cabinets like i would i remember when that was really in style too to have the glass fronts and then everybody was like wait a second that means i have to like be really careful about you know how i have the inside of my cabinets laid out and so that kind of went out of fashion which i'm glad for because ugh. It's not, it's not something I would want to deal with either. Same thing with open shelving. I also remember when open shelving was a big thing. Because again, it was like, it opens up the space. It makes everything look so much better. And then eventually interior designers figured out that, oh yeah, people just clutter up the open shelving and then it actually looks worse instead of better. So we kind of X that out of the equation. But again, Moschino stuff coming in. I don't think I've used these pieces of furniture in anything except for like community lots before. But I thought again, with this style of sort of the contemporary renovation, very Simstagram worthy, right? I thought this actually looked really nice in this build. I even go so far as to use that quote unquote coffee table because I was like, these are totally the guys who would go and repurpose something like that as a coffee table. Plus it's extra storage technically. Like you could have your blankets in there, your extra pillows, whatever. I put in a little console table here that I'll use to display some collectibles later as well. 
And then I remembered that they had three dogs, so I needed to put in stuff for three dogs. And I don't think the automatic feeders would quite fit there and make this usable. I didn't play test it with them there, but I did play test everything critical in this build before I uploaded it to the gallery. It all does work even with those dog beds there. They're facing in different directions, so the dogs should all be able to lay down on them if they want to. Although the dogs really don't use dog beds very much. If there's a couch available, dogs will usually lay on the couch before they will lay on a dog bed. So, eh. But they're there, you know, as kind of the signal that, hey, there are three small dogs in this house. And since Bryce is a geek, I wanted to have the um, video gaming box in as well. They can game on the computer, of course, but like, Self-respecting geeks very often have some kind of video game console. I am not a self-respecting geek. I do not have a video game console. But I also wanted to put just a little bit of outdoor entertaining space here as well since they had that pool. So just a grill and then I put a little bit of seating in later. And you know, you, this, this deck was just crying out for rocking chairs and seating because again, this faces the park. So they definitely just sit out here and kind of watch the world go by and you know, probably Brent and Brant come around and wave to them as they're walking Rosie and stuff. So I thought that was a nice touch as well. I ended up not changing anything fundamental about the pool. I didn't change the shape or size. A, because I didn't want to deal with the money, although I could have made this smaller in order to get myself some more simoleons. But I figured that's actually a pretty big task in real life to completely redo a pool. So I figured, ah, that probably just stays as it is. I used some terrain paint for the patio to kind of save a little bit of money and then put in this nice bar height dining table out here. I really love using those items together, the stuff from Tiny Living and then the stuff from, I think those ones are from Cool Kitchen stuff. Um, and then that backyard patio citronella table. Backyard patio stuff I think is a little bit underrated for what it is. I really like it for doing back, I mean, it's literally backyard stuff. So that's the one that the wind chimes come from. That's the one that the bird feeder comes from, which is the only bird thing that the birds will actually interact with. They don't interact with any of the bird houses, but they do interact with that bird feeder. So especially if your Sim is into collecting the feathers or you're trying to get that purple owl statue, I actually recommend putting in a bird feeder because they will drop feathers sometimes while they're using the bird feeder. Um, and it feels less obnoxious to me than making my pet chase the birds. Like, I feel bad making my pet chase the poor little birds. Poor little birds are just living their lives, you know? I figured this kitchen, I don't usually put dishwashers in because, like, you don't need them. You can just click drag everything into the sink. And they, the Sims don't really take long to wash the dishes, even if you make them wash the dishes by hand. But I figured in the spirit of the renovation, right, this would be a big selling point that we took this old kitchen and we put a dishwasher in it, right? So I stuck one in anyway. And here I am doing the music studio. So the studio, I wanted to have that, you know, kind of contemporary look of being very, very dark and warm, you know, very kind of cozy for doing for doing the work. And I gave him that music, or that track mixing station as well. I very rarely use that, but I figured it was a good thing to put in since he was a musician, like that's actually his career. And of course the rainbow hearts above the bed because obviously. I didn't end up having enough money to put a flag in anyway, so I'm glad that I put that in because I think that's also, that just looks like something that maybe one of them made in high school or something like that. So I thought that was cute. I love that plant from Eco Lifestyle too. I use it all the time. <laughs> It's just such a nice size. It's nice and tall, so it takes up space, but it's not super wide, so it's easy to fit on those one tile spaces without it clipping too much through the walls. Um, so I think it looks really, really good. I ended up going for the double showers here just because I thought that was a good use of the space because this is a pretty big bathroom and also felt very luxurious. You know, you have two walk-in showers. Like, isn't that lovely? Isn't that wonderful? That seems like it would be a huge selling point uh, for, for the house. And putting in a little shelving unit for this downstairs bathroom. I thought about using the one from Tiny Living, but I didn't feel like it really suited this sort of contemporary style. 
but I figured maybe they were the type that had some collectibles on display in here. So like I have that dog statue that looks like Sasha, the one dog, the dachshund. So I was like, yeah, they definitely have, they definitely have that. And then I started putting in some of these collectibles. So like the little My Sims trophies that kind of look like Funko Pops. I'm like, they definitely have that. And then for Bryce, I figure this is Bryce's side of the bed. He's got some of those Void Critter cards because... He totally collects Void Critters. He is an adult that collects Void Critters, and he is not ashamed. And you know what? Good for him. I love that for him. You know, love the things you love. You know, maybe he collected, maybe those are some of the ones that he treasures from when he was a kid, or maybe it was something that he couldn't have as a kid because they cost money. I also put in those Simstagram photos of the gourmet food, but they are glitched to where once you go into live mode, they both turn into the same picture. So unfortunately, when you place this and go to play in it off the gallery, it might change both of those to being the same picture, which sucks, but other builders are running into this too, and I don't think there's really anything we can do about it. And then I'm realizing here, in order to make the curtains fit, I have to move the windows again and the fireplace. So now we just add more money to this renovation, right? We're literally changing where the fireplace is just to suit the curtains. But I didn't really want to use the, um, the movie night stuff, the movie hangout curtains for that because they are made for a two wide window. So it wouldn't have actually helped anyway. I would still have had to move it in order to keep the curtain from clipping into the fireplace, which is like, ah, fire hazard. Like, I know The Sims doesn't care and the fireplace will just catch things on fire whenever it wants anyway, but ah, fire hazard. So couldn't make myself do it. I had to change the entire architecture just to accommodate the curtains, but it's The Sims. You do what you have to do. Adding some more decorations in now. I never used that zebra print rug either, but I thought it looked really nice in here with this kind of brown theme. And here I am like, I really want to use that bowling night lamp again. And then, no, I should not use the bowling night lamp. I have used it too many times. So I end up going with this one from Discover University that I thought suited this kind of contemporary, eclectic sourced stuff very well. I figure they probably found some of this stuff at the flea market in San Myshuno. Um, definitely Matthew, since he's a style influencer, probably works in San Myshuno and probably knows when the good stuff is going to the flea market. So I figured that was very reasonable. And then I ended up going with this um, this uh, giraffe lamp kind of for the same reason. I'm like, they're a little bit interesting type of people. So I figured that definitely went, but the giraffe lamp takes up so much snapping space on these things that I had to use the red OMSP shelf in order to place it. But it was worth it to have my giraffe lamp. I never get to use it and now I get to use it. And then adding uh, one of the collectible pieces of metal as well. I thought having it on the display was really cute. And I put in all of the things that uh, Bryce should need in order to progress in the entertainer career. So he has the guitar, the violin, um, the keyboard levels piano skill, and then there's also the microphone for leveling comedy. So I think he does have to level comedy a couple times before he can choose the musician branch of the entertainer career. But you have that available now, or he can just start singing. That's cool too. I also, in the spirit of having the dogs put in that backyard obstacle course, you can't actually have them run it. You need four obstacles in order to have them run obstacle course. But for training, you know, just the three for right now. And then, you know, maybe they buy another hoop later or something. It's a little bit tight to fit in a four piece obstacle course, but it works. Um, and I never fence in my properties like this. It's very, very rare that I fence in the entire thing, but I thought this was a house that really suited it. And I put that uh, fence or the gate off center on purpose because I wanted, I didn't want it to be just a straight shot into, into the front of the house. I wanted to kind of have this meandering path happening and just give it a little bit more visual interest. So I ended up doing that and then I lay in a path with some terrain paint here in a little bit. I also go in and I replace the trees with trees that are alive. And yes, when it comes to this exterior, I do use a lot of debug objects just so that I have a little bit more money to play with inside. Um, you'll see me start with paid objects. Um, and I think I do still keep two of the trees from uh, cats and dogs just to make it blend in here a little bit more. But I'm really, really loving layering this terrain paint. Simlissy does this a lot. Um, where you've got the layers of terrain paint just to make it look a little bit more organic. 
Uh, and I think, I think that comes out really well, especially when you're doing gravel paths. I think it really, really works for gravel paths. Um, but here I am bringing, bringing the trees back to life. Uh, it's really interesting that vampires and outdoor retreats share so many assets. Um, it's not two packs that I would have expected necessarily to work together, but then when I look at the actual worlds that come with those packs, it's like, oh yeah, I can kind of see both of them really suit the, the pine trees, both of them really suit the flowers and stuff that come with it. So it's, yeah, like I said, it's not something that I would have expected, but when you think about it, it actually starts to make a little bit more sense. I love these lavender bushes out of the debug catalog. The ones that we have just from base game in the regular build by catalog just don't look quite as nice to me. And I sometimes like that lighter purple a little bit more, but they go really well with the build by assets from outdoor retreat, which I end up selling off again, just to have the money back. But they, they, um, I think they are in base game as live edit objects if you want pretty much that exact same clump of flowers but for free the only thing is the live edit objects don't give you um green environment rating if you have eco lifestyle so keep that in mind if you're wondering why a property with a lot of plants isn't going green it may be because some of those are debug objects so just watch out for that if that's your goal for the neighborhood but it is actually kind of nice to have them not be because sometimes you don't want your neighborhood necessarily to go greener but you still want to have plants because like an industrial area especially a house or something can have plants and look really green but the area can still be really industrial so i like having that option to play with for the houses i think it i think it gives you a little bit more flexibility with the way that the uh, game can be played I gave him a, a, an AC unit, an HVAC unit out there because I took out the radiator. Um, so someday maybe you can add in a thermostat here and make it really make sense. And of course, giving him a couple big rocks out front as well. And here I just remembered that I did not actually give them tile in a kitchen backsplash. And this one from Parenthood actually goes really well with those walls. I wish that it had some crown molding on top, but only because I'm using the wall paint that has crown molding with it. And the reason I'm using that one is that gives a minor environment gain, which I think that's the biggest problem that I've been having with my builds lately and why Sims are like, oh, this is badly decorated is because I'm not using wall and floor textures that give environment gain. Like that's the only thing I can think of. Sims are so picky now with, you know, I want everything to look perfect. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to give you an uncomfortable mood late for the next two hours. And I really, really don't like that feature. It is the most irritating thing that they have introduced on purpose in a long time. I, cause like, there's nothing you can really do about it. You can be throwing like huge environment rating furnishings in. And unless you have something like this, where the walls give an environment rating, they're just going to sit there and cry that it's badly decorated. And they're like, something's just not quite right. Maybe it's the floors, maybe it's the walls. And it's like, but I've loaded this area with, you know, decorations that should be giving environment rating. It's just, mm, I would like that to stop. But we're just about done with the build at this point. We're just about, um, just, you know, finishing up a couple little touches with the terrain paint, and then we'll be on to the screenshots. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this build, please do leave a like and comment with what you liked about it. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you can get notified when I post new videos. I also stream every Friday on Twitch. I've been streaming at 7 p.m. Pacific. I might change that time here in the future because it's a little bit late but you can follow me on Twitch. You can also subscribe to get access to my streams without ads. So yeah, enjoy whatever it is you do between now and next Friday. Catch you later.